so the low contrast film held the shadows and the highlights and I could kick the shit out of it in lighting terms and it gave a much more punchy image without losing highlights and shadows. The highlight extras are wonderful. The very first time I saw it, which was seven years ago, was a demo, it was one of those ones, come and have a look at this, uh, at Arri, where they had two Dolby monitors side by side, one at 100 nits, one at 600 nit brightness. And 600 nit now isn't that bright. And it was a shiny silver aluminium plane tilting and the sun catching its wind. I went, whoa, whoa, want that. You know, just amazing. And immediately went out and started doing research into HDR then. And, but what we're talking about, and it took me a while to understand, is high dynamic range display, which is very different to high dynamic range stills shooting. And high dynamic range still shooting is where you combine several shots. So you're underexposed, you're normally exposed, overexposed, and then combine them all. Now I tried doing that with motion imaging, where I would take two Alexas in a mirror rig and take the mirror rig down to zero disparity and do one two stops over, one two stops under, and then combine them in post. Works. You get an Alexa with 20 odd stops of dynamic range. Brilliant. But it's a big rig big, big rig, and there's nothing you can show it on. You can measure it, but what are you going to show it on? The best, sorry, the best cinema at the moment, DCI spec, is nine stops. Well, the great thing about having a wider dynamic range in the camera is that even if you're ending up at a television which will cope with a maximum of seven stops dynamic range, you can still get more into it because you can use power windows. You can pull highlights down. You can hide shadows or lift shadows up or and it was really fascinating i remember a, a very experienced gaffer with a very very experienced dp who went into a film scan for the first time on some kodak tests and i was there and the gaffer was looking at what mick vincent actually was the colorist and watching what mick was doing with power windows and the gaffer went hang on a minute that means i don't need to net those windows and I don't need to just put something in the shadows under there and the gaffer got it way before the DP did and the gaffer's going I can save a huge amount of time by not fixing it in post but finishing it in post because you've got all the data there all the information there on the sensor which means partly you can be faster and partly you've got more choice if you shoot bearing in mind you're going to alter it later but you need the experience of grading it to understand what you're going to do. And one of the things that worries me is when I started, DPs had to learn how the labs worked. Because if you didn't understand what processing was and printing was and pulling and pushing, you weren't able to get the best out of what you did. And I've noticed a reluctance amongst students that are just graduating to actually get in, oh, they don't need to worry about that. We can fix it or we can do. And as I was saying about shooting with a spot meter, I like to know what I'm shooting because then I know how I can manipulate it later. But I've had to learn the entire process. I've had to learn about different ways of debayering, the way that that process can alter things, that different programs debayer differently. And that brand A is different to brand B. The one that's most popular isn't actually as good as the one that's more expensive, funnily enough. Um, you know, and you need to know that. I think the thing is that there's also the tendency if you're shooting log, you know, in the five grand range cameras, that quite often people just throw a lot on it in post and go, yeah, that's 709, that's it, bosh, done. Like, no, don't do that. Um, one, I love ACES because it gives you control or standards again. But also you can do things like if you put a standard 709 output on, on an ACES workflow, it's quite contrasty. It clips the highlights and it, or it doesn't, it rolls them off, but you know, fairly aggressively in the same as the shadows. But if you just wind the contrast down to 0.85, it just eases everything off and you get way more dynamic range than you normally would, but you can actually use it 
The thing is that when I was shooting on film, I used to use low contrast stock a lot. Things like um, Agfa XTR 250, Kodak 87, um, because I could light in a much more contrasty way and the film would hold it. So the low contrast film held the shadows and the highlights and I could kick the shit out of it in lighting terms and it gave a much more punchy image without losing highlights and shadows. So by taking that approach with digital imaging and going into ACES, I can do the same thing and just wind the gamma down, to, the contrast down, not gamma, contrast to 0.85. And it, it works. Mm. And I can use contrasty lighting, but still get a, a usable image. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting.